Welcome to a session on production of ultrasonic waves by using magnetostriction oscillator. Here I am going to explain the principal construction and working of magnetostriction oscillator. So the basic principle uh, behind the working of magnetostriction oscillator is magnetostriction effect. So what is magnetostriction effect? When a ferromagnetic material uh, maybe it is iron or nickel or cobalt, whatever it is. So, uh, here a ferromagnetic material is taken in the form of rod and placed under a AC magnetic field, alternating magnetic field. So, now when we place it, this under AC magnetic field, there is a change in its length. What happens is, sometimes its length increases, sometimes its length decreases, change in its length so that a change in its length creates what vibrations those vibrations will use what waves so this is the uh, basic idea behind the working of uh, magnetostriction oscillator this phenomenon is called as magnetostriction effect so if you apply the ac signal of a higher frequency then the changes in the expansions and contractions are much rapid and accordingly uh, the waves produced also having uh, that much uh, frequency. Now let us see the construction of the magnetostriction oscillator. Basically this is the circuit diagram of the magnetostriction oscillator and uh, it consists of a ferromagnetic rod AB. So this rod is named as what AB. It may be a iron or nickel. It's basically ferromagnetic and it is pre-magnetized already uh, some DC current is passed through this so that it will get magnetized permanently such rod is AB on the AB two coils L1 and L2 are formed at the two ends and here this device is called as a triode valve uh, nowadays these triode valves are replacing with the transistors here this triode wall having three important parts one is grid circuit plate circuit and cathode as like emitter base and collector of uh, transistor so this is plate circuit and this is the grid circuit and this is the cathode now here this is the clamp which is placed at the center of the rod and this is the milliammeter to measure the flow of current and this is the capacitor uh, which is placed in parallel with the inductor L1 of course it forms a tank circuit this this LC circuit is called as what tank circuit and this is the DC battery uh, so this is the basic apparatus inside this particular uh, magnetostriction oscillator now let us see working so before going to uh, understand the working of this magnetostriction oscillator so what is an oscillator? Oscillator is something, input it will take as DC current and finally it will convert it as what AC signal. This is called as what oscillator circuit. Such oscillator circuit it is. Here this LC circuit will form a tank circuit. So first of all, let us switch on this DC battery. So, whenever you switch on this DC battery, so the charge is going to store at a capacitor, at a capacitor. If this capacitor continuously charges, 100% it charges, once again, if you, uh, what, if you switch off this, if you remove this uh, DC battery, what happens is, here you connected a inductor in parallel with water capacitor so this forms the lc circuit of course parallel lc circuit whenever uh, this is switched off then what happens is uh, this capacitor start to discharge so the current will flow from capacitor to inductor once again uh, after completely it is it is uh, fully discharged once again the inductor will send this energy back to capacitor so capacitor continuously charging and discharging the energy is exchanging between capacitor and inductor which produces a ac wave ac wave and 
the wave frequency can be calculated as 1 by 2 pi into root over L by sorry 1 by 2 pi into root over 1 by Lc where L is the inductance where C is what capacitance. In this way a specified frequency of AC signal can be produced with the help of what circuit LC circuit or tank circuit. So the frequency depending upon the value of inductor as well as value of capacitor. Here uh, we are changing here the capacitor is a variable capacitor. So we are now here changing the value of capacitor so that we will adjust the frequency of the tank circuit. So uh, this will take place here capacitor stores the energy and it discharges so that that energy will be stored in the inductor. Of course in the capacitor the energy is stored in the form of electric field in the uh, inductor it will store in the form of a magnetic field. So continuously uh, it charges and discharges. Continuously uh, this inductor also stores the energy in the form of a magnetic field and the energy so oscillates between capacitor and inductor. So it forms a sinusoidal wave or AC signal. In this way the AC signal is generated. This AC signal is applied on the ferromagnetic rod AB. So this ferromagnetic rod as we discussed in the previous case whenever a AC uh, signal is applied to AC current is applied to this ferromagnetic rod there is a change in its length for half positive half cycle and for negative half cycle the length expands and contracts. So uh, now this rod sets into vibrations. So this rod AB sets into vibrations because of what magnetostriction effect. So now already we discussed this is magnetized rod. So this magnetic flux lines which are linked with the coil L2 changes according to Faraday's law. So as there is a change in the magnetic varying magnetic field is there obviously it produces what EMF this EMF or current whatever it is. So this current once again given back to grid circuit of the triode wall. This triode wall this triode amplifies the signal this is the input signal what is given back to grid and this particular triode wall amplifies this and it, this amplified signal given back to tank circuit. Why, why it has to given to the tank circuit? This mechanism is called as a feedback mechanism. Why it has to give to this particular tank circuit is so uh, it will serves as one type of input to this. So what happens is if the energy uh, exchange continuously between inductor and capacitor, inductor and capacitor because of the resistive resistance and inductance losses slowly this wave will die out like this damped because of what resistance of the and re resistance effects as well as what inductive effects. So because of this the wave die off, it dampen. So to remove this and to make the wave continuous which means a sustained frequency so a predefined frequency you have to continuously give the input to AC signal to this particular tank circuit to maintain the sustained oscillations that can be done by taking feedback and giving amplifying and giving back to tank circuit in this way it constantly produces a AC signal of desired frequency. This frequency we can control by changing the value of a capacitor. Now at what frequency we will operate this tank circuit, LC circuit which is equals to the natural frequency of the rod. This rod also having certain natural frequency. So the natural frequency of the rod can be calculated by using the formula 1 by 2L into root Y by rho. So here L is the length of the rod 
and y is the its angst modulus and rho is the density of the material so if you substitute all these values you would get the natural frequency of the rod whenever this natural frequency of the rod is equals to the natural frequency of the tank circuit resonance will be takes place if these two frequencies equals this frequency uh, tank circuit frequency 1 by 2 by root into 1 by lc as well as 1 by 2l into 2i by rho so these two frequencies are equal then this rod vigorously which means that uh, rapidly vibrates with the larger amplitudes at this particular stage it produces uh, high frequency waves these are called as what waves uh, ultrasonic waves this is the operation of uh, magneto friction oscillator uh, by this method we can produce ultrasonic waves up to 200 kilohertz and one more thing if we want if i want to produce 190 kilohertz or if i want to produce 180 if i want to produce 170 kilohertz like that specific wave specific frequency here there is an option if you change the length of the rod then obviously its frequency changes so as the rod length changes then you can produce a desired value of frequency of ultrasonics so this is the way how to produce ultrasonics waves by using magnetostriction oscillator thank you